Okay, let's get on to part two of my power meter basics. This is a little bit further than just basics, but bear with me. I'll either add some clarification or some further confusion. Either way, we'll have a bit of fun with this. Today, we're going to discuss the difference between zero offset or zero tear, which you do with your head units um, when you first start arriving at the power meter or when they backpedal that you can do very easily versus the slope or what we call proper calibration of a power meter. They're two entirely different things, but they're related. Now, the way I'll present this is how Alex Simmons has done on his blog. He posted this about two years ago. I'll link it below. It's a fantastic article. He was using bathroom scales to show the analogy between zero offset and an incorrect slope. It's a fantastic article. If you're a bit of an engineer or a bit of a techie or a bit of a nerd, I'll link below. Have a read. I'll present it today using kitchen scales and a whiteboard and a rubber duck. So we have a set of pretty crusty kitchen scales, but they will do and a rubber duck. Now the rubber duck has a known weight of 49 grams. How do I know that? Because I pre-weighed it and I've put a label on the bottom there. 49 gram rubber duck. Zero offset, okay. The button here is called tear slash zero. That is exactly the same as when you zero your power meter. So we'll turn this machine on. There is no weight put on this. So there's zero, effectively zero torque or zero pressure on this. So we put the 49 gram rubber duck on and it reads 49 grams, spot on. That is quite accurate. We take it off, it goes back to zero. Zero offset. What happens if the zero offset wasn't correct? Here's, I'll show you what happens when that isn't correct. As you can see, the zero offset, or when we've turned this on, it's currently negative seven. So what we expect when we put a 49 gram rubber duck onto this scale that's zeroed, or effectively reading from negative seven up, what do we expect to see? 42 grams. So a 49 gram rubber duck is now weighing, according to this, 42 grams. How do we get it to read correctly? On a power meter, you pedal backwards and zero the offset, or however you do that with your power meter. On here, tear to zero, zero grams, and we're back to weighing 49 grams. That, in a nutshell, zero offset. Do a quick graph of that how that actually works graph wise. You have actual weight and reported weight. Now effectively you want these to be say 10, 20, 40, 50 grams. That's the actual weight, so under here, 49 grams, and the reported, which comes from this machine here. So we'll do the same, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Down here being zero. If, so what would ideally, in a perfect world, the actual weight of 10 grams is 10 grams, 20, 20, 30, 30, and away we go, 40, 40, 50, 50, you get that. You can see the pattern that's happening there. If your zero offset is actually out, as we saw before, it was down to negative seven. So that involves me drawing down to negative seven, down here, negative seven. If that's where the slope actually starts, you will have under-reporting of the actual weight. So we'll draw that here. So what we had, and we can follow it through, our duck that weighed 49 grams over here, with the zero offset, which was incorrect down to negative seven, in this case, the 49 gram actual weight was reading 42. So you can see the difference here. That's what's wrong, zero offset's wrong. We correct that by zeroing the offset. So if we started at blue, so we pressed the tear slash zero, zero the offset, which put the slope up here. I can draw that correctly. And what we have is the 49 gram duck up here weighing exactly 49 grams. There you go. That's why it is super important to have correct zero offset on your power meter. Same goes for a positive offset. It will read too high. Negative offset read too low. It needs to be zeroed. That's what an offset does in a nutshell. Well, in a duck shell. So thanks for playing rubber duck, 49 grams. Rubber duck has explained what a zero offset actually does.
slope. Within the zero offset, we were discussing where that slope actually is. Now we're going to discuss what the slope actually is, not where it is. So again, back to our x and y. of actual weight, we got in grams, and reported, again in grams, again using the kitchen scale, up to 50. In an ideal world, 10 should equal 10, 20 should equal 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50, 50. All done by hand. Hopefully my lines aren't, yeah, okay, I'll pay that, that's not too bad. That, that line there, the actual 10 grams is the reported 10 grams. So in a perfect world, that's your correct slope. If your slope is incorrect, you'll have under readings, no matter where your actual down at zero is where our zero offset lies, zero grams in this scenario. Power meters based on different numbers, but the principle is always remains the same. I'll get a red pen out to show you what happens when the slope is incorrect. So if your slope is incorrect and you have a slope that reads this way, so again, we're starting at zero, or your slope is too high and it reads this way. You can see what happens here. So we have figures of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But if your slope is incorrect, A or B, up here, if you're actually doing, say, 30 watts, we'll talk in watts, the reported watts may only be 22. Or on the, other, on the flip side, if you're doing, on this line here, if you're doing 30 watts and it's over-reporting, you'll be doing 35. That is called an incorrect slope. And regardless of you actually zeroing that slope, it's going to read incorrect. This is a tough one to fix. Zero offset, again, easy to do. You can do it via any head unit. It gets you back to the starting point. But if your slope is incorrect, it's game over. So the power meters you can correct the slope on, yourself, SRM, Quark, so SRM, I know you can hang known or certified known weights off SRMs to actually re-correct your slope. Quarks do the same with a Quelvin app. Let's go through an incorrect slope using the rubber duck scale again. We zero the offset, grabbing our rubber duck, which we know is 49 grams. Let's just say it's reading a little high. So let's just say the slope of this is reading out. Now we know the rubber duck is 49 grams. Let's put the rubber duck on. It's reading 55, so the zero was correct, but the reported weight is incorrect. Now I'm no magician, so you see what I'm doing there, but 49, again, 49 grams, 49 gram duck, 55 gram duck. We don't, that indicates the slope is off. What I'm actually doing, I'm putting an extra weight on there to trick it. That's effectively what happens though, when your slope is out. So let's abracadabra, fix the slope, which means I remove the extra weight. And there we go, back to 49. That's what correcting the slope does. It makes sure the actual weight equals the reported weight. And with an incorrect slope, you can see what happens here. How to correct these slopes, we will discuss in another video. So herein lies what a slope value is. And when you calibrate a power meter, the calibration of that slope is usually what we talk about in technical terms. It's not zeroing the offset to correct these super hard. How I do it, I have a, this is known as a certified weight. That's what we hang off the crank arm ugh, using the Kelvin app or in the case of a kicker, we'll actually use the rare as hen's teeth calibration arm and a known, I believe it's a 10 pound weight. So that's what we hang off and then from there, Again, they're known actual weights, so then they can calibrate the actual system to make sure the reported weight is correct, and they'll then follow this black line, where one watt equals one watt. 
So again, thanks to Alex Simmons for the uh, inspiration on the blog post I saw the other day when I was researching this in ways of how to present it in a, I guess, a more consumable way so it's easy to understand. Hopefully I've done that. Hopefully I've added clarification, not confusion. And stay tuned. We're only just beginning. Thanks for watching.